Hello everyone, my name is Nemanja. If you followed any sort of link to this video, then you might know me from the pretty but fake world of Instagram or uh, from the funny world of TikTok. But the reason I decided to create an account on yet another content creating platform is because um, YouTube, I, I, I want to say something. And YouTube, I think, is the right place for that. First of all, I feel like I owe YouTube so like I, I feel like I have to give back to YouTube. I grew up watching people on YouTube, the OG YouTubers, um, and a lot of them came out during you know their YouTube careers. But I could never really fully relate to any of them. There's always some difference, either the place of living or the, the family concept, how their family looks, uh, or their friend group. You know, you can never really fully relate. And I just feel like it'll be much better if people, you know, if we as a community just carried on that tradition and sort of populated YouTube with more and more videos of people sharing their stories so that there's more people other people can relate to. The kids that are watching this, not sure if, you know, a lot of people would be able to relate to me fully, but I think that, you know, a, a large portion, you know, some young younger me will be able to relate and that makes me happy. So I'm going to shorten the introduction. I'm going to end it here. I'm just going to get on to the story. My story starts in kindergarten, actually. This is sort of a story for kids who are maybe more straight acting, uh, so they're able to hide it, which doesn't necessarily, you know, end up being a good thing for them because, you know, it's a lot of pressure that builds up. When you're able to hide it, you just sometimes hide it for a very long time. And the kids who live in conservative environments, I live in a Balkan country. So I live in Europe, I live in the Balkans, and uh, here it was it was stressful coming out, but I did it and I'm gonna come on here, share it for anyone who might use this piece of advice. So as I said, my story starts in kindergarten. That's why I can't really relate to people who, you know, say that they were finding themselves, that they sort of, you know, needed time to realize what their sexuality even is, because I knew straight away, I was in kindergarten, I was four, I knew exactly who my crush was right away, straight up, that's it. There was no confusion. I never liked girls. But the thing is, I didn't really realize, I think, that that was weird at four or five. It was gradually over time that I, you know, people would only ask me, oh, did you get a girlfriend yet? Or, oh, you and her would look so cute together. The, the old people jokes, you know, you're seeing only male and female couples around you. There is no example of this. And you just sort of are alone from day one. You're just like, oh, I can't tell anyone. I can't. And that's the constant thing that you're carrying with you is no one can know, no one can know, no one can know. So with for me, no one knew until I was 20, not even a random guy in some, you know, DM from the other side of the world. It was just me, 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 me. And I was the only one who knew who my crush was. And this was going on for 20 years. I haven't told anyone. The reason I hid it for so long was also due to the fact that I had so many other things marking me. Like I had so many other labels already that I felt like, I just couldn't express this this fourth one because first of all I was um I was a foreign kid. I moved from one country to another and I was always sort of the outsider. I, I was always the foreign kid to people. Second of all, I was overweight, so I was also the fat kid always. It was always the you know and I and I wrote classes. So those three things, it was always, you know, I was I was so mad that people were so lazy when describing me. They would be, you know, if they're talking about me. They would say, oh, the fat kid, or oh, the kid with glasses, or oh, the foreign kid. You know, it was always just one word, and I hated that. I wanted people to, to say, oh, the kid that draws well, or the kid that has that funny laugh, or the kid that is talented in photography. You know, I wanted, I wanted them to use some words to describe me, to give, you know, my person some meaning, just so, so that I'm not just like a token for a fat kid in class, or, you know, the foreign kid, or the, the, the blind kid. So this went on in elementary school, middle school, and I was really done with it. I was, I was so frustrated that when time came for me to transfer from middle school to high school, I said, you know what, I'm going to remove all these labels myself. I started wearing contacts and that summer between middle school and high school, 
and I lost 15 kilograms and it was a very strict diet and it was so unhealthy and so bad for me. I ended up with IV in my hand and it was so unhealthy. It was so bad for me, but I was so determined to just sort of show up somewhere, show up in high school and just be plain, just be, you know, a kid who is of acceptable weight and who is, you know, not wearing glasses. There is nothing marking me so that I can just fit in and you know not experience any any labels anymore so i did that for myself and i showed up in high school and i loved it i loved the fact that i was finally able to just just you know have a name finally and just not be um marked or determined by any of my outstanding features so i was thinking i can't you know i'm not doing this i'm not coming out i'm not you know, taking off two labels only to put a third one on, like a new one. So I just kept it for myself. And girls started liking me. <laughs> Not to brag, but, you know, it felt nice getting attention from anyone finally in that way. Even though it was girls, I was like, oh, okay, I can like, I can deal with this. Like finally experiencing this at like 15. So I was low-key with it. I was certain 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 that i would never ever ever come out i knew that i was gonna have a wife i knew that i was gonna have kids i was like i'm never going to see another man in that way ever in my life i just you know that's just something i just crossed it in my head i was like finally i got what i wanted i'm normal i fit in no one's gonna like no one's bugging me over anything no one is you know insulting me no one is you know bullying me i'm great so that went on. Um, I even went to the U.S. for um, for like an exchange year as an exchange student. So I switched continents in third grade of high school, and I never acted on my you know sexuality ever. Like I never went out with a guy um, for the whole year I was abroad. I, I remember one time I actually went to the zoo with a friend of mine who happened to be gay. And we were alone the whole day, and then I came back home. He dropped me off home, and he texted me later, and he was like, oh, I think I have a crush on you. I was like, sorry, dude, I'm straight. Like, I can't help you. Like, it didn't even... I was so deep into lying to myself. Not lying, but just sort of, like, telling myself, yeah, that's not happening. You're not doing that. You're not acting on that. That I straight up just rejected someone who was okay with themselves and who was out and who was you know living their actual like life and i was just not ready to to step into that i just didn't want to so i came back to croatia after my like exchange year and everything was back to normal i was a straight guy going to high school in croatia <clears throat> and no one not even my closest best friends no one had even a little bit of doubt of a doubt that there's something different about me i was just Going out with girls, I had girlfriends, you know, following all the rules and just living like society wants want, wanted me to. Like, I was like a robot. After that, after high school ended, I even went to the UK again for a year abroad to study in um, a little north of London. And, you know, this is already college and there were so many guys who were actually gay and out. And even telling, like, telling other people like, oh, I wish Nems was gay, like, he's really cute, like, and stuff like that. I never, I cannot believe that I was not even this close to coming out. There, it was just not something that I even considered. Like, I knew exactly who I was attracted to, and it might have been even one of those guys, but there was no way that I would ever say it or act on it. Until after first year of college, I went to visit my host family in the US that I that I spent time with when I was in my student exchange. So I actually planned the whole summer with a girl. I was talking to a girl from high school and we were, you know, friends in high school, but we sort of got closer when I was uh, when I was back in Europe and we talked and we agreed to have like to spend the whole summer together. We were planning a road trip and we were planning, you know, a lot of uh, trips together in the US to go visit places. She would take me places and then a tragedy happened and she unfortunately passed away. So I had these tickets and I was supposed to spend the summer in the US, but when it comes to her, I could only attend her funeral. I went to her funeral and that's how my summer started. So I was alone there 
and I randomly started hanging out with some people I knew from school, from high school, um, when I when I did spend the year there on, on the student exchange, and a new friend group sort of formed in the first month of summer, uh, and in that friend group is where I met my first boyfriend, and it was very you know, very accidental and nothing was really planned and really caught me off guard. I you know I met him through this group of friends. And we, uh, his family wasn't from the U.S., so he actually went to visit his family in Asia for um, 10 days or so, 15 days. But I was still jet lagged from, you know, coming from Europe to the U.S. So I was spending almost every night um, up. I was up until like 5, 6 a.m. And he was, you know, in his time zone that he was in. Um, it was daytime, so we spent a lot of time talking because I was sort of, you know, I had no choice but to talk to him because he was the only person that was awake. And we started talking and talking, and then slowly through that, we started flirting, but I almost didn't realize that because all of these other guys before, while I was determined to, you know, stay straight, um, I was sure that I was going to have a girlfriend, I was sure that I was going to have a wife, there was no way I was going to live this lifestyle, I knew that I was going to have kids with that girl. And that was just my whole plan. So any guy that came on to me before with a straight up, I like you, was rejected. But this guy, we were talking as friends. We started talking as friends. And then gradually, it just turned into flirting. The way this happened, I think, is because for the first time ever, I just stopped looking at myself as a guy. Um, I completely stopped looking at myself as anything. And I just looked at him. I just looked at the person I was talking to and I liked him and you know because up until up until this moment I was still repulsed by two guys kissing or two girls kissing even though I was gay and I knew exactly when I laid at you know in bed at night I knew who I liked I liked guys and guys only but seeing two guys kiss or imagining you know myself kissing a guy like from the th from the third person like seeing that I was like, that's not normal. That's not something that should happen because that's how society, you know, works and what society taught me. So now that I was only looking at a person that I liked, I could actually relax. And after two weeks, I was like, I'm flirting with a guy. And I just told a guy that I like him. And he told me that he likes me back. So he came back from his trip to Asia and we, you know, we started dating basically and what gave me that push um now that i was dating a guy what what gave me the push to tell everyone that i'm gay finally was the fact that when we told our friend group when we you know came to the next hangout and we were like yeah we're sort of dating it was the fact that no one was really that surprised about the fact that it was two guys everyone was more you know surprised about the fact that it was us Two, like those two personalities as if you know if you had a friend group and I don't know let's say Sophie and Jake start dating and you would never you know think that they would have anything in common everyone was like oh really you two like I would never like put you two together in, in that way in a romantic way as in you know our two personalities and when I saw that you know, everyone was so chill with it because I, I don't know what I expected would happen. I don't know if I expected that the world would end when I say, oh yeah, I'm dating a guy. So after my summer there, um, while I was there, you know, I was telling my friends in the UK and more and more friends in the US. I was telling everyone, you know, individually to see their reaction, to sort of prepare for the big reveal to my family when I get back to Europe. But this was still Europe, like Eastern not really Eastern, but Eastern and Central Europe is where my family is from. So I was gradually going from Western countries, you know, US, and then I told all my friends in the UK, any friends that I had from college. And then when everyone was sort of chill with it, I was sort of gathering the courage to say, okay, I can, I can tell everyone now because I already have like 10 friends on my team. So I have these 10 people that are, that know, and that are fine with it and that are still my friends so it was it, with every person I told it felt easier to tell the next person because I just had less less to lose
So the first person I told in Croatia was my cousin, actually. And the way he accepted it was I was sort of scared at first. I said it, and then he was like, are you serious? And I was like, yep. And it was like a long pause. And he was like, like, really? And I never said the words, I'm gay. I don't think I've said the words, I'm gay, until recording this video, because... It was just like the, the the stigma is so strong that you sort of are repulsed by the word as, as well. So I told them I might be in a relationship with someone that is not a girl. That's how I came out. So after me saying like us saying back and forth, are you serious? Yes. Are you serious? Yes. He was like, okay. I was like, I thought that you were artsy. That was his that was his response. He was like, I just thought you were artsy. I never thought that you were actually that. And I was like, yep, I am. And when he accepted it, I was even happier. I was like, now I have a family member on my team. Like, now I can just, I can scream it from the rooftops now because I have like 10 friends. I have a family member and I have a boyfriend. And I can live with that. I can, I, if those are the only people that will accept me for the rest of my life, I'm fine with that. So it was time for the big moment for telling my mom. And uh, I told my mom two months after this, I told my cousin right after that summer when I came back, when it all happened. And then I told my mom somewhere in the fall. Um, I told her because I had to sort of tell her that I'm going back to the US to visit because I was in a long distance relationship. And the way I told her, I said, uh, we were in a car and she was, uh, she was in the car with me, I was driving and we were going to my college. She was dropping me off to class um, and then, you know, taking the car somewhere else. So I remember we were at a traffic light, like one traffic light away from, from my school and I said, oh, I'm going to the US again for, for the winter holidays. And she was like, oh great, um, did you get the ticket? Are you gonna buy the ticket? And I said, um, my friend bought it for me. And there was just silence. And she was like, what do you mean friend? And I told her, um, you know the guy that I talked to a lot and that I um, sort of introduced as my friend from the US? He's not really my friend. And she was like, what do you mean? And I said, well, we're dating. <sighs> that was like, she didn't start crying until I left the car, but she told me later that she went straight to her psychiatrist to, you know, make sure that she has the right reaction. She didn't want to tell me anything until she consulted with her psychiatrist. It was like consulting a lawyer, but she was just sort of, okay, and then she stormed off, canceled probably all of her plans and went to see the woman to ask her for advice on how to properly respond to me. And I appreciate this because when I was 14, I didn't mention this, uh, when I was 14, she found my web browsing history and it wasn't fun for her probably. Um, but that was the first time and I, I managed to lie. I managed to persuade her that it was me and my friend sending gay back and forth, like the links to prank each other. And that it was nothing like, I was like, I'm not gay. What? Like, how, why would you ever think that? So she made sure like her reaction back then was not good. Cause she was like, yeah, it's so unnatural. That's like, that's sick. That's not normal. That's, you know, so I sort of knew her opinion on that very clearly for seven years and that sort of pushed me back into like, okay, I'm not living that life, that's sick. So her reaction to me actually saying it was good, I think. But one thing that caught me off guard was um, when I got back home that day, when I got home from class, um, she said, I, I entered and she was like, I told the whole family and I was like my heart just sank I was like what and she said I called grandma I called your dad I called your aunt I called your cousins she told everyone 
So I was kind of scared, but at the same time, I was relieved because again, the world didn't end. Like my whole family suddenly knew and everything was fine. So she told me everyone's reactions. Um, my cousin, my female cousin was, she was crying and she said that, um, that I'm so handsome that she always thought that I was going to have a beautiful wife and beautiful kids and she was sobbing basically. My aunt said that that's because I went to the US, that um, I saw that there and that I'm impersonating that crazy culture and that she shouldn't let me go back there because it's sick. And my dad was the most chill with it. My grandma was the most chill. My grandma said that she knew. She was like, okay, life goes on. Like, that, it's not that big of a deal. I knew anyways, I was telling you guys. So my grandma was kind of keeping everyone's heads cool. My, my male cousin was, you know, feeling very proud because he was the only one who knew. But he never told him that he knew prior to all of them. He was just like, he had the most chill reaction when my mom called him. And he was like, okay, like, so what? Relax, why is everyone panicking? And my dad, um, he sort of, I think they both cried on the phone, but he was like, it is what it is. Like, that's just life. Like, it's normal. These are kids, so that's fine. And the, just it's just the weird thing is that we never spoke about it. Me and him, we never ever, you know, mentioned it after that. We talked, they've been divorced since I was too but um me and him we hung out and we talked after that we just go around that topic he never asks me about girls anymore he knows the situation he knows that i have a boyfriend and he just it's just awkward for both of us to talk about it i don't mind him not bringing it up he doesn't mind me me not bringing it up so with him it's just sort of agreed silence about the topic Ugh, where was i I told, so I told my family, I mean, I told my mom, which meant telling the whole family, and then I told my best friend, and that's it. Um, after that, I started posting it on social media more, just to sort of free myself, and that was really, now that I look back at it, that was the best decision I've ever made. And what I want to just sort of tell anyone who's watching who might think that they have, you know, a gay kid or a gay friend or you know brother or sister don't first of all don't ask them until they tell you because everyone has their you know time span of how long it takes them to become comfortable with it or you know whether they decide to say it or not it's completely their choice you're not doing them a favor by pulling them out of the closet um, and telling them you can just tell me anything, you know, I'm your friend, just, you know, confide in me, you can, you can tell me whatever you want, I'll, I'll support you. That is, that is not the right way. Um, some people can love you the, the most in the world and still decide not to tell you because it's their thing. And also, don't just nonchalantly ask people, are you gay? You know, as a joke. Um, we all know those girls, those like mean girls in elementary school. Don't don't be that girl. Um, I still remember the girl that asked me in eighth grade um, if I'm gay, and I went home and I was recording myself walk and talk for three days straight after that to see if I walk in a feminine way. What gave it away? I was I was tripping out, and she probably forgot about it like three minutes after asking me. So keep those things in mind. Um, keep in mind that it's not a choice because 13 or 14 year old me would definitely choose to be straight um, and not just, you know, put another burden on himself. And that's it. Um, I, there's probably more stuff that I could share or that, you know, there's more details in that story, but um, I didn't really want to make any bullet points or any notes before talking to you because I just felt like sitting down and turning on the camera and speaking um, as if I'm, you know, just talking to a friend and answering a question on how I came out would be more sincere. So if any questions 
rise and if if there's anything else that you need advice with i'm very um aware i'm very well aware of how, what it's like to hide such a thing and i never had anyone to talk to not even a random guy from youtube um, or instagram so and i'll put my socials i'm not fam familiar with youtube yet but they go in the box below right so i'll put my socials there um and they're open for you to ask for advice and to ask questions and i would love to be that person that you know could guide you a little bit and help you with the whole thing so i'll definitely see you guys on here this is the first but not the last video on this channel so thank you and don't worry about anything the world is not ending got this bye